Hey, what up all my tooth doctors and doctresses? Welcome to another episode at the Tooth Factory. Today we're gonna finish up what we started in the last video, that is cranial nerves. That includes trigeminal nerve, the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve, and also a bit of facial nerve. So get your pens and papers out and let's go. Also, because this video includes all the anatomical structures involved with the skull and the brain, please visit the last video if in case required for reference. The links are in the description box below. Also, there are links to our notes on our Facebook page and Instagram page. Please follow us, like us, and you can get your notes for free. Hope you learn loads and try not getting on anyone's nerves today. All right, let's get going with the second lecture of the cranial nerves. Today, we're gonna to talk about the trigeminal nerve and also mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve and at last the facial nerve and we're going to have a diagrammatic schematic representation of the nerves. Trigeminal nerve. To start with, it's got three main branches. It's got ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, and mandibular nerve. We are more concerned with mandibular in this lesson and as it is the only mixed sensory and motor branch of the trigeminal nerve. The other two are both 100% sensory. Now, all three of these nerves split on the face and allow different aspects to be presented with sensory innervations and some with motor. So let's get going into the classification. All right, the trigeminal nerve, the fifth cranial nerve and its three divisions. Ophthalmic division, which is first, maxillary nerve second, and mandibular third. This is the face and it is divided into three thirds. The first third which is right above the orbit and including the upper margins of the orbit supplied by ophthalmic nerve. Mid facial region so just above the the maxillary region including the maxilla and the lower aspect of the orbit all of that supplied by maxillary nerve and mandibular nerve as it suggests the lower third of the face. So when we see the supplies, we will correlate with the part of the face that it supplies. Let's see what it, let's see what it is. Ophthalmic division, first one, enters the cranial cavity through the superior orbital fissure. Now, a note here, uh, please visit the link below, which is a previous video on anatomic structures that lets you know where all these nerves enter and exit from. So, ophthalmic division, superior orbital fissure, carries sensory innervations from these locations, the eyes, conjunctiva, and orbital contents including lacrimal gland, nasal cavity, frontal sinus, and ethmoidal cells, upper eyelids, dorsum of the nose, and the scalp anteriorly. So this is the first upper third of the face supplied by ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. Number two, maxillary nerve. Enters the cranial cavity through foramen rotundum. Again, please visit the link below. Carries sensory innervations from these locations. Nasopharynx, nasal cavity and maxillary sinus, palate, teeth of the maxilla, skin on the side of the nose, lower eyelids, cheek and upper lips. Remember, this is the middle third of the face, so all the contents will belong to circumnasal regions. Mandibular nerve, third division, we'll look deeper into this ahead, but let me just give you an overview of it. It enters the cranial cavity through foramen oval. Sensory innervations and motor innervations. It's got two, remember? It is mixed. So, sensory from skin of the lower face, cheek, lower lip, temporal region, anterior part of the external ear, mastoid air cells, anterior two-thirds of the tongue, floor of the mouth, teeth of the lower jaw, mucosa of the cheeks. This is where it senses everything and let's go back to the brain. Now let's, let's take a look at where the motor innervations are. This is basically where the nerve moves the muscle. It gives the muscle motor senses. Muscles of mastication. So, right off the bat, all four of them. Temporalis, masseter, medial and lateral pterygoid. This will be our next lesson. Muscles of mastication, so stay tuned. Another motor innervation. Anterior belly of digastric muscle. Mylohyoid muscle. Tensor villi palatini and tensor tympani. These two muscles are those 
that are separated from facial nerve but supplied by mandibular nerve. We'll take a look at the facial nerve as an overview later. Let's get on with the mandibular nerve. Before we step into specifically the mandibular nerve, I'm going to, guys, I'm going to show you guys an overview, a schematic diagram of the trigeminal nerve and specifically the mandibular nerve. Number one, the trigeminal nerve is initially sensory and then later joined by the motor branch. It crosses this region also known as the semilunar, mandibular, masticatory or the trigeminal ganglion. This is a ganglion. Remember relay stations. It will relay this nerve which is trigeminal into three different branches. First one, ophthalmic, we know all the upper third of the face. Maxillary branch, the middle third of the face. And now we're gonna talk about the mandibular branch. Remember, this motor innervation comes right down to the mandible. So this is mixed, sensory and motor. There is no green color here, so there's no motor, solely sensory. So mandibular, mixed sensory and motor, enters through foramen oval and as soon as it comes out it gives off two branches right away from the main trunk this is known as the nerve to the meninges meninges basically scalp and the supply of the skull enters right back into the skull from foramen spinosum located right behind oval second nerve right off the bat the nerve to pterygoid medial pterygoid this will further get into smaller branches than supply tensor palatini and tensor villi or tensor tympani. Moving on, it goes forward and goes into the anterior section, the anterior trunk. Remember, this black is the main trunk, this is anterior trunk, and obviously this will be posterior trunk. Second stop of mandibular branch, anterior trunk, gives off nerve to lateral pterygoid, masseter muscle, and buccal branch, and deep temporal nerve. Now, remember one thing, that nerves to the muscles of mastication are all motor, and the buccal branch is sensory. Hence, we are speaking of these, 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 and of course, this when we speak of motor interventions. This nerve right here, the buccal from the anterior trunk is solely sensory. Okay, we'll look more into detail, so don't worry. Moving on from the anterior trunk, the pink is a posterior trunk. Right away, we go behind the ear, auriculotemporal branch. In the front, lingual nerve, right, right behind the mandible and right next to the tongue and lingual gingiva of the lower teeth. It enters the mandibular ramus through mandibular foramen. Then it turns into inferior alveolar nerve and then gives mylohyoid branch. Then it goes all the way to the anterior region near premolars and canines and gives mental branch. And then at the incisor region it gives incisive branch. This nerve is the most important nerve of dentistry that we deal with on a regular basis. So, all of this summarized. Sensory motor branch, ganglion, two sensory, number one, number two, and then mixed, which is number three, mandibular. Comes out, oval, goes reverse, first branch from the main trunk, nerves to meninges, back to foramen spinosum, nerve to medial pterygoid, and then anterior trunk, all the reds. Remember, buccal is the only sensory. All the others are all motor. Posterior trunk, it includes auricular temporal before it enters the mandibular canal. As soon as it enters it, it becomes the inferior alveolar nerve, mylohyoid branch of the inferior alveolar. Moving further out through the mental foramen comes the mental branch and anterior teeth incisive branch. Remember the lingual nerve comes right before the foramen, uh, mandibular foramen and is accompanied by corda tympani. It is a branch of facial nerve 
that allows sensory and secretomotor interventions we will later talk about this has to do with the tongue and the glands submandibular and sublingual we'll talk about that later mandibular nerve we have already viewed the schematic diagram this is a verbal form of the same thing again a repetition it passes through the foramen ovale located in the middle cranial fossa as a mixed nerve it's got main trunk, anterior trunk, and posterior trunk. The main trunk gives off two branches, nerve to meninges, which right away passes through foramen spinosum into the skull, into the middle meningeal artery right next to it, and supplies the scalp and the middle cranial fossa. Nerve to medial pterygoid. Nerve to medial pterygoid right away again, medial pterygoid muscle. It's got motor interventions. Also, after it reaches otic ganglion, it splits into tensor villa palatini and tensor tympani veins, or sorry, nerves as well. Anterior trunk, it's got four branches. Buccal nerve, 100% sensory, deep temporal, mesotric, lateral pterygoid, all motor. Buccal nerve, sensory to the buccal mucosa of the posterior teeth, gingiva of the posterior teeth and skin of the cheek pretty self-explanatory calling it buccal and sensory deep temporal to the temporalis muscle mesotric to the mesotric muscle and the temporomandibular joint lateral pterygoid to the well lateral pterygoid muscle so in the first two trunks the first nerve in the main trunk and the first nerve in the anterior trunk are only sensory all the other motor Posterior trunk, it splits into three different branches and very important. Number one, inferior alveolar nerve. This is a mixed branch itself. Auricular temporal nerve, completely sensory. Lingual nerve, completely sensory. These two nerves split from the posterior trunk right before they enter the mandibular foramen in the ramus. Auricular temporal supplies sensory to the skin of the tragus, which is right behind beside the ear the upper part of the pinna again ear external acoustic meters ear tympanic membrane again ear and it's got secretomotor fibers to parotid gland uh, through ganglionic actions lingual nerve floor of the mouth lower lip labial mucosa all sensory then it teams up it has a partner called corda tympani Corda tympani enters the submandibular ganglion and splits as a secretomotor branch of the facial nerve. So, lingual plus corda tympani, fun and sensory, supplies the tongue with uh, taste buds and all the sensations. But as soon as it enters the submandibular ganglion, it provides secretomotor fibers to these two glands, allowing it to secrete saliva upon command. Again, sensory, sensory, and mix. Inferior alveolar nerve splits into three branches after it enters the mandibular canal. First branch, mylohyoid branch. Enter anterior digastric muscle and mylohyoid muscle. This part is the mixed part. Mental branch, sensory, comes out of the mental foramen or supplies the chin, lower lip, and the mucosa. And sensory branch, again incisive branch, supplies the anterior teeth. This is the mandibular branch, third division of the trigeminal nerve. And wow, we're into facial nerve. Uh, it is important to take this nerve into account as well from the cranial nerves. That is, it, it is an important nerve. But we're not going to go too deep. We're going to go overview. Let's start with the bubbles. The facial nerve in the skull passes from the medullary junction and lateral to the sixth cranial nerve, which is abducent, continues anteriorly and passes through internal acoustic meatus from the previous video. So please check out the link below. It then exits the skull through stylomastoid foramen. Now this is important because it exits the skull, enters the face from stylomastoid foramen. It's got special visceral efferent fibers. All we need to know that it specifically provides motor supply. Efferent is motor. Afferent 
is sensory. So efferent motor fibers to the muscles of facial expressions and scalp, posterior belly of digastric, stylohyoid muscle, stapedius muscle. All of this, all of it is motor by facial nerve. Let's see its branches, okay? Nerve to facial canal, corda tympani. We know we're aware of this. Nerve to stapedius, we just said this is motor response. And emerges out through stylomastoid foramen on the face, then splits into even more branches. In the parotid gland, right above the skin, it fans out in five different branches. All of these are motor branches because it supplies the muscles of the facial expressions. Which branches from the parotid gland? Temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical. We just gotta mug this up. We need to know this. Next, posterior belly of digastric, again, motor. Stylohyoid branch. It allows the elevation of the hyoid bone. And then auricular branch, right behind the ear. We did not talk about the nerve to facial canal. Let's just go overview of that very briefly. Greater petrosal nerve, foramen cecum, facial canal, pterygopalatine ganglion, and then lacrimal gland. So basically it lets you cry. Okay, this is a facial nerve. Uh, you will have all of these documents available to you on uh, Instagram and Facebook as always. And I'm just gonna leave this diagram over here. It's a very detailed schematic diagram. Let me just go through it. We know this is the masticatory nucleus comes out and allows ophthalmic branch, maxillary branch, and then enters the face through um, the foramen oval, comes in with motor interventions, remember anterior trunk, foramen spinosum, takes two nerves back, enters the mandible, inferior alveolar, anterior trunk, sorry, anterior trunk and posterior trunk, and Again, this is a very detailed label diagram. You do not need to know this. This is just for perspective. So feel free to take this off the notes and uh, hope you learn a lot of nerves. See you in the masticatory muscles.